This is the Anarchist War Journal entry number four, in which I'll continue the adventure of philosophy and discovery <laughs> and finding out who the liars and cowards are at the International Students for Liberty conference in Washington, D.C. And that's something that's always um, helped me survive, you know, through, uh, through childhood, through my young adulthood life, and to where I am now. Right? It's a great betting system to have. Assume automatically, universally, that everyone is a liar, that everyone is a coward, until proven otherwise. All right, you find the cultural hegemony of the state has uh, created a lot of subservient people, difficult for people to break out from, to stand up for what is right, despite what everyone else thinks of. Right? And that is an attribute of having courage to stand against the grain of would-be opinions from the herd. And that can be brought about and I guess and uh, realized in having good honest conversations in which you find areas in which contradict previous notions and you continue to press forward, right? It's like, well, yeah, I haven't considered that, I haven't uh, really thought of that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I do not know, right? What is wrong is presuming otherwise. And if you wanna survive in this world, if you wanna be able to, to make it in the society, you're gonna have to presume otherwise that everyone is a liar or a coward until proven otherwise. And the way you can kind of see how some of this stuff can come forth is just by asking them questions. All right, this is something, a great thing for children to learn as well. Always encourage them to ask questions. Do not be afraid of who they are, right? Ask me questions if I'm your parent. Ask the teacher, continue to ask why. Never accept because I said so, because of my title, because of this you know, false uh, plain cloth of authority. Right? Never accept that as an answer. When people do that, they're hiding something. They're lying about something. They're lying that perhaps they don't know. Right? So, to sum up a lot of this stuff, a uh, great thing to take with you is always presume everyone's a liar or a coward until proven otherwise. And that's kind of what this these series of interviews are about. Who is honest enough to, to talk about what it is that they know and do they have the courage to follow through with that, to follow through with the principles, right? Because um, if they don't, it's usually for another reason. It's usually because, you know, there's a lot of people who believe otherwise, who fall in a different crowd, on oh, circle and surrounded by a lot of different kinds of uh, groups that consider otherwise. It doesn't matter what other people think, right? Be that guy and that famous photo that people see all the time where everyone's giving a hell salute to Hitler and he's got his arms cross folded. Right? Fuck that shit. Right? That's who you need to be. That's what you need to bring out. Doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Continue to do what's right. That takes courage. People who are too afraid because then they fall in the herd mentality, that's, that's pathetic. That's cowardice. That's lying to yourself and creating excuses and justifications that they lead to nowhere. Lead right back to where you began. You know, no improvement doesn't further any kind of cause, doesn't further improvement of society, doesn't improve your life. So with that, I'm going to continue the next conversation I had. I guess I'm kind of skipping a few, but I'm going to go to some of the juicy stuff right now. Uh, the next one was with uh, C4SS, which is an acronym that stands for the Center for a Stateless Society. Which, uh, which is something I've, I've, quite, I've known for quite a long time. I've known about mutualism for years. I've known about a lot of these things for years. And my method, I guess, in um, seeing the areas in which I saw were bad ideas, um, not so much in insulating, I guess, the tribe here in Richmond, but just don't bring it up, right? I, if I don't bring it up, if I ignore these uh, bad ideas out there, uh, they're not really much to kind of contest. They really don't have, they don't have any effect here in Richmond. Right? It's not like they, they have any foothold or stronghold, right? The ideas of like flat earth nonsense, it doesn't really affect here in Richmond. The idea of, uh, again, I bring it back up, uh, Ron Paul, you know, creating a effect of freedom. I haven't seen it, right? I haven't, I haven't seen any of this stuff. None of this stuff really affects Richmond. But of course, along the way of discovering anarchy and learning more about it and reading more literature and stepping outside of um, the box, so to speak, of things that uh, you're told not to look into, you'll come across these ideas. And so, which is kind of what this year is about. 
uh, in, in that regards. Um, can't really ignore these bad ideas anymore. and kind of have to kind of go out there and knock them down and uh, show you for yourself and for you to, to examine, for you to see and um, discern, right? Um, and let's find out what that looks like with the interview with Dylan Delecta from C4SS. My name is Cal, and right. you're... Dylan Delecta. Dylan, pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from uh, Liberty RBA, a non-political organization. Yep. Uh, anarchist here from Richmond. Uh, yep. So, I guess, uh, I guess I'm, I'm here at, uh, I guess, the International Students for Liberty Conference. Yep. And so, what brings you here to the conference? Um, well, right, so one, I am uh, associated with Center for Society, and uh, we'd like to table at this event. Also, I'm a CC for SFL. Okay, uh, so, what is uh, the C4SS all about? What does that stand uh, so for? I mean, Center, everybody says state yeah. for Center for Society. Yeah, Center for Citizen Society is uh, a left-wing market anarchist think tank. Um, sort of decentralized, it's not, doesn't have like, it's not like a building like Cato or anything. Got it. So the Center for Citizen Society, the center itself is decentralized. Good to go. All right, let's continue. Um, and what we're all about is um, Distributing uh, kind of op-eds on uh, kind of through a left-wing market anarchist uh, lens, while also um, doing things like studies uh, on multiple uh, things like property and uh, income and things like that. So, how would you define uh, free market? So we define free market a little bit differently from um, other libertarians. Uh, we we uh, don't see it as synonymous with capitalism. Uh, we, we tend to see uh, free markets as pretty much like everybody else does. Okay, so you define the free market as something as a little bit differently. How differently do you define it as when you mentioned earlier, um, right before this, what was that again? We, we tend to see uh, free markets as pretty much like everybody else does. Something that everyone else does see a free market as. Right off the bat, it's like, what the hell are you talking about? Where are you going with this? Like, come on, simple definitions, right? A lot of people can get this. A lot of people here at this conference can understand what is a free market. This whole convention is about in some way or form wanting some kind of freedom, right? Through the market, right? Uh, in areas of exchanges, areas of trade and interactions with one another. You should know what a free market is. If you're here tabling for quite some time now, you've been out here for several years and you still can't tell me what is a free market, Let's continue to find out what else you do not know. However, we think that uh, by acting in the free market, uh, different ends will come out than some other would predict. So, right, I guess yeah. I'm asking, I guess examples of what you're, what it's not like, or how it's similar. I'm asking, how do you, how do you define what is by definition a free market? Okay, so yeah, a free market would be uh, a market that doesn't have any sort of state interference, and not just state interference. Uh, uh, per se, but uh, also being able to, that everyone has the ability to be able to enter into the market and, uh, and to compete with everybody else. So, oh, so, yeah. like, so like the state, in terms of mean like interfere, like they violate consent, Yeah, right? they, they violate consent. Um, we, as we, uh, we've seen um, through multiple studies, like uh, Gabriel Kokel's uh, Triumph of Conservatism uh, covers, uh, there have been multiple instances where bigger businesses um, kind of uh, come together to create regu uh, to kind of uh, pr uh, not protest government but uh, to um, go to government and then say hey we want these regulations so that um, smaller competitors can't compete with us. Right. So, so, so essentially saying you're defining free market as where the state does not intervene so therefore a yeah. free market is uh, interactions that are consensual. Yeah, in a, in a sense, yeah. Okay, uh, right, I agree with you. I, I guess, and I guess, uh, in that area, then would you? Do we have a free market today? We do not have a free market. Right. Today. Yeah. No. That is. That I think um, anybody who really like, kind of pays attention to like free market ideas, whether or not um, they come from a left wing or a right wing perspective on it, uh, in terms of anarchism. Um, it wouldn't be a free market today. It definitely, definitely it's a state-controlled market. In yeah, that. it's right. it's very uh, colluded with state and corporate interests that just kind of mesh together, and it's yeah, it's just not right. <laughs> uh, what would you say there in terms of corporate interests? Without government, there is no such thing as corporations, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, um, I'm not an expert on limited liability, so I'm not going to uh, go into to that. 
but I, I would say that without a state, it would be really hard for a corporation to exist. Exactly. And um, you know, be, especially because there's a lot of uh, a lot of laws and kind of benefits for a corporation to exist. You know, it just it, it allows them to concentrate capital, and, and you know, other people don't really have a chance to kind of come into the market because of that. So. Right. The same yeah. uh, immunity the government grants themselves from their own actions, right, mm -hmm. uh, is an extension of what they give to yeah. corporations to yeah. do the same, would, right? Yeah. Uh, so without government, no corporations, no CEOs that can't be held liable for their yeah. actions like the uh, oil uh, spill off the coast of Alaska, mm -hmm. the Bali's oil spill. No yeah. CEO lost their job, lost their money, went to jail, nothing, right? <laughs> right. They right. offset the cost to everyone else, yeah. right? Uh, I guess, okay, so you mentioned earlier where it's like uh, in terms of Kaplan's, like uh, free market is not like capitalism. Yeah. Uh, could you, I guess, elucidate a little further? Like, how yeah. do you define what is capitalism? So, um, some of it is semantic. Um, we Some people kind of strategically don't use capitalism as a word to define free markets because of um, just being able to uh, talk to other people. So, like, a lot of people who associate, who, when we uh, talk to other, like, maybe like liberals or even conservatives on that hand, they tend to... Um, conflate uh, free markets with capitalism by like, uh, oh, you know, what we have today is a free market. That's know? very true. Yes. Like Rupert's study from Visa <clears throat> said that millennials can't even tell the difference between what is socialism or capitalism. Right. Right. Yeah. And um, so what, what they do then is like, all right, so let's not use capitalism, let's use free markets because free markets sound better um, and then, than capitalism, which has kind of that negative connotation. And then there's also, uh, we also have a more take a historical stance on capitalism. So uh, back back in they were uh, you know the individualist anarchists in America and some of the um, more free market thinkers in like England and France were starting to talk about free markets and uh, ideas of, of those sorts. They tended to use capitalism as more of a pejorative, um, saying that capital benefited from the state and that in order for a free market to exist, that uh, other people can actually. Be a part of the, the society and uh, be, be uh, get out of poverty and things like that. It made sense to be uh, against the uh, the promotion of capital over other things. So, um, so we you think of thinkers like Thomas Hodgkins uh, during that time, who would say things like you know um, something along the lines of what a socialist would say, but he would also say that we need a free market to achieve that. What the fuck, man? I just asked you about two minutes ago, what is capitalism? I didn't ask what people's sentiments are about it or what people centuries ago or decades ago have written about it or thought about it. I'm not asking what people feel about a certain word. I'm asking you to define what is capitalism. I'm still waiting for that. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I guess in terms of like you're saying, well, there's a negative connotation associated with capitalism. Mm -hmm. Sure, you can say that. And yeah. it's saying so much that there's a negative association with socialism. And, and there, At the same yeah. time, there's a negative association with anarchy, right? Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, so we're, we're, this is a word game. This is a, like a, a of marketing. It, some uh, of it thing. is, but... The, you uh, have factual evidence to show, I guess, your interactions to show people, I guess, their inability to understand what is capitalism and their negative association towards that. So, you know, we have, uh, we have multiple articles, not just on C4SS, but we have books and stuff, too, that kind of show, that kind of define capitalism. More than I can just show you evidence right, like oh, how, right well, now. I, I guess that was like my first question. Like, yeah, how do you okay. define capitalism? Right. What what is right? That? So we we would say that capitalism is the historic um, presence of kind of favoring capital over labor, in the sense that like capital gets benefits from the state um, that labor doesn't necessarily get, and they are able to like make money off of that, like a, a huge amount of money and. Uh, Technically, I guess it's more of like a privilege kind of thing. Well, stop right there. Uh, I didn't ask for a historical precedence of what uh, you may assume what capitalism is or what other people have thought what is capitalism, right? Simple definition, simple question. What is capitalism? But at the same time, when you hear his response and the way how he's uh, following through with it, Capital over labor. Okay, I could get that, right? You know, I would ask you still, you know, then if you can define what is capital. Simple question, right? Your simple response would be uh, accumulation of assets, right? Of, of wealth, right? Things you find of value. Uh, labor, interesting word to also uh, define. But when you kind of fast forward all that stuff, when you could have just left it right there, and we could have a fun time just exploring that, you added the 
social justice warrior potato keyword there, privilege, privilege. That already tells me this is something more than just uh, advocating for a free market. This kind of tells me there's something itching, hiding underneath here that I need to figure out what it is that you actually advocate for, right? Underneath all this stuff, you're bringing up privilege all of a sudden, you know, where, where does that come from? Where, 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 where does that notion lie? How do you attach privilege now with capitalism? Let's find out. That sounds very um, all over the place. Like a good concise uh, yeah, definition, I'm, right? Yeah, I'm trying to... <laughs> yeah. That's like, like on the spot, too, you know? I mean, I mean so. like, like if, if, if you guys are mentioning that, saying that capitalism has an associated negative connotation, I would imagine that you have a good definition of what is capitalism. After right. quite a while of writing about it and against it, mm -hmm. you would have finally a good definition of what it is and not what it's like or what is examples of it, right? I want to know what is capitalism. Uh, and especially in this term you're mentioning now, labor, um, if you could define what is labor. So labor to, is usually, you want to... No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you I'm in a sorry. second. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, because it's like, you know, I'm trying to give you the best definitions that I can. Yeah. But, you know, because I'm, you know, on the spot, it's like hard for me to really But you're, you're, you're here it. at the table. Are you right. telling people otherwise that capitalism oh, is a negative thing without like, providing them a definition? Like, so we're trying to get them to understand that there are multiple definitions of capitalism. I'm still waiting for your definition right. of capitalism. And what I'm telling you is that like there are multiple definitions of it and what we're trying to do is help people understand that maybe capitalism isn't the best way to kind of define what a free market is. Because if capital all right. But, but what is capitalism is what I'm still trying to figure so out. So capitalism is again, you know, what you would call crony capitalism. But I would so, not call that. But yeah, I would not call it crony capitalism. Sorry, I'm not going to include capitalism with another way for you to attempt to disparage the word, all right? For you to continue that there's a negative association with it. So you can continue to call the problems that happens when uh, government interests intervene and business interests. You're going to call that crony capitalism? Oh, please stop. <laughs> I prefer what uh, Jason uh, from Liberty Rally uh, proposed. Yeah, it's, you know, crony statism. Crony statism at its best, or you can call it crony socialism, right? That's the socialist aspect trying to interfere, right? What happens when uh, government interests uh, interfere with business interests, market business? You call that fascism, right? So, yeah, I would not call that crony capitalism. I think it's kind of time to kind of separate the two, uh, unless a lot of these people continue with their propaganda campaign to, for, for what? Well, we'll find out what it, why, the real reason that they're disparaging capitalism, why they would want there to be a negative association and tie to it um you know all this sort of things kind of lead somewhere and i'm trying to figure out get to the bottom of this right well where are these ideas coming from why are, do you take these positions for what notion for what reason to what end right now well, let's find out all right what i'm saying is so like capitalism today yeah. and capitalism historically has been a favoring of the state of big business um over uh, over uh, labor and uh, other things, you know. Uh, so you see a lot. Of, I'm gonna. I'm I guess. Just, I guess. What, what I'm is, sorry. No, I'm, no. I guess. Yeah. What, like, well, I guess. So I would say, like, you're defining corporatism then. Right. Yeah, exactly. And see, okay. that's the thing. Right. Is like most libertarians would define that as corporatism. Yeah. And the reason why I so when I say that's capitalism, and then you ask me like, well, why is that the case? Why is that the case? I never asked. Why is that the case? All right. You're skipping couple of conversations I had thinking you know where I'm leading to or what I'm alluding to. I never asked, why is that the case? That seems like something that you're projecting or another hidden agenda that you're putting out there, right? Rewind, you know, go back a little bit. Never ask, why is that the case? So then I give you the historical definitions and I give you the semantic arguments. I haven't had a, a historical know. definition. So like, for example, like, I mean, even by historical definition, that would be like an argument of antiquity, and at the same time, words are not fixated, well, right? They they update, they upgrade towards like a sure, contemporary that, thought of that. That may be the language. case, but then it has to then it has to be argued then that why? All right, so how how is it that we've come to capitalism as a free market if it's never had an association with free markets? You know, so like even if even if we know uh, if even if we use the term capitalism as free market, like uh, uh, today. It doesn't seem to make sense because we have never seen a free market. 
how can we call it capitalism then? Why why does it have to be why does it have to be con assumed to be capitalism if we really don't don't know? Well, I, I would say like my definition of it would be uh, respect for private property and voluntary exchange. Right. right. Um, application and, for private property is would be I'm sorry uh, the most uh, ethical way to resolve conflicts of dispute. And um, you know most most people in C4SS would not you know would not argue against that. Okay. You know what we, we add to it though um, we add more like what we do is we try to uh, look at multiple definitions that people have taken of capitalism. See that that kind of definition of capitalism though is is kind of under a libertarian paradigm. No one really understands that. Like no one takes it up unless they're convinced of libertarianism. I would say like nobody really knows what capitalism is because they have not provided a good concise definition but, of what it is, what is capitalism or what is not capitalism. So of course, um, yeah, you can go. Well, and we can and we can go into the, the this, but at the this same further. Time, like, like even you know, with anarchy, right? You're you're saying like uh, even though the definition, the terms, or the association of a majority of the people have associated with with anarchy in terms of that with uh, smashing store windows, right? Uh, Molotov cocktails, uh, advocation for minimum wage, right? Uh, would you say you're against the uh, police state? Oh, of course I'm. Yeah, right. Because, yeah. Would you therefore say you're against uh, minimum wage? Um, you know, that's a bigger question that I don't know if I could like, answer. But I why can you not answer that? You know what the minimum wage is backed by, right? The police state. That should be a very easy response to have, right? You call yourself an anarchist, I'm presuming here, right? You're here at this, um, I know the history of uh, mutualism. I know what C4SS is about. Right? They call themselves an anarchist think tank. So if you're going to be associated with this table, you call yourself an anarchist, you must necessarily be against all political rulers. You must necessarily be, of course, be against a state, thus against a police state. Thus, when you kind of break it down, thus uh, any uh, initiation of force, right? Anything that advocates for violence, anything that violates consent, as you previously um, concede at that point in terms of uh, trying to define what is a free market, right? So it's going to be something difficult to try to, you know, come to terms with or try to figure out a response to. So it be a very a simple, easy response. Uh, yes, I am against minimum wage because it is enforced by violence. It is enforced by the police state. It violates the consent of those who want to interact and trade. It's like it's any other good or service. It's like any other skill or or uh, interaction with one another, right? That should be your response. But let's see where you're going to take this then. I would say that mostly all, all of us at C4SS don't really agree with the minimum wage because of um, its history of being uh, used as a way to kind of... Uh, promote sort of racist and sexist uh, that's right yeah, right so, the history yeah. and of course like who enforces minimum wage right right the police exactly. state. yeah yeah so <laughs> so yeah that should be your first uh response yeah yeah we, we can look at the examination of the effect of what happens when you have any kind of a uh, government law or restriction on uh, human interaction right on, on voluntary trade there's going to be a lot of bad stuff that occurs from there a lot of negative consequences that's what austrian uh, economics is about right examining the long-term effects of uh, Keynesian economics and the damages that they incur from the very beginning that it can be difficult to assess until later, right? So yeah, uh, the effects from minimum wage laws, yes, affects uh, negatively with a lot of other types of uh, groups out there, particularly black people and uh, particularly young people, people who, who don't have skills to begin with, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a law that discriminates. At least we, we can agree with that, right? Uh, but at the same time, how do they discriminate? How is this enforced? Through violence, through the state, right? That should be a very easy go-to response. Yeah, uh, it's enforced by the state. And of course, yeah, uh, there's a lot of uh, negative consequences that have occurred because of that, including uh, the way it affects uh, the black population towards that, the younger population towards that. Yeah, these are bad things, bad effects that have occurred because of that. Um, but it would not have a place in, in today if we're not backed and enforced by the threat and use of violence by the state. You know, so it's like, you know, while you know, at the same time, it's like we, we, we understand that people might need more money. It's just it's like this has been used as a way to kind of promote still that racism and sexism. So it's like you, a minimum wage wall is just not. It's a distraction. What's yeah. really robbing you of a living wage? It's not McDonald's or Popeyes. It's government, right? Yeah. Local, city, state, federal, uh, 
sales tax, imports, tariffs, everything you buy has been taxed and increases the cost. Mm -hmm. Currency, fiat currency, right? Loss yeah. of its value depreciation. First, the poor, the worst, mm -hmm. right? Difficult to save when it continues to depreciate in, in every single way. Yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah, I find there's, I guess, a lot of distractions. But I guess you yourself yeah. would advocate against the state, right? Oh, yeah, of course. And you would advocate against political rules of any kind, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, all right, so. The state is abolished. Last question, I guess, in terms of like how okay. the goes, like state yeah. is abolished, government is abolished, no more political rulers. Uh, the society that you like to live in is like right next door, okay. or hypothetically next to mine. Right. Uh, would you grant me the same uh, courtesy, respect to respect the private property? Balance I mean, yeah, in the you know, is? yeah, and you know, not libertarians. I mean, we may uh, approach property in some different ways, but we still have a respect for other people's property, right? So, um, no, uh, we just think that it. What we do is we we rather uh, well, at least in my opinion, we have a conversation about what's you know what is what's property? property you know and uh, what is property exactly <laughs> no, no no oh well to, <laughs> this is a hard question just because it's like there's so many different purviews of it. But, uh, uh, I mean it should be something that's easy for people to understand. Well, right? and and that is true and but you know a lot of I think a lot of property theories kind of start in a very complicated manner. Err, uh, wrong. A lot of property theories actually start off with very basic um, foundations, right? There's got to be something easy and digestible, right? Not the long, complicated equation. That comes afterwards, right? And defining what is property should be something simple, something easy for people to kind of recognize. And from there, of course, it can get complicated. And trying to justify and trying to, uh, to show uh, the justifications and uh, your foundational, I guess, response or answer to that right and how you defend that position yeah, that can get complicated of course um but to define what is property should not be that difficult what this entails what he is doing now is muddying the waters trying to tell the viewer trying to tell other people of course if the questions are asked no oh, it's a very complicated thing oh it's very difficult to understand all right it's kind of a weird i don't know scientology sort of thing right now well, until you get to like level four, level 10, and you've been involved for a while, and you'll, we'll, we'll reveal it to you, right? But right now, it's too too much for you, for, for the common mind, for the common proletariat to, to figure out and understand, um, which it should not be, right? Um, this is the foundation of society, this is the foundation of trade, this is the foundation of uh, many of our interactions with one another. Uh, the way we use property, the way we control and wheel of property, the way we claim ownership, the way we exchange property or give permission to use, right? It happens all the time. Uh, it should not be a very difficult then of a concept to to explain. And for someone to say otherwise um, is already on a path of deceiving you, tricking you, lying to you, or maybe this don't know. Maybe they themselves have been misled. Maybe that is what's occurring here. And he's been kind of fed this, well, I'll reveal a little later, but um, that's something to take note, right? Um, if someone's going to say otherwise and claim otherwise in terms of uh, the words that they use, they should know what they mean. Otherwise, just don't. Stop. Continue your philosophical journey to understand, to figure out, right? To have a good answer, to have a good understanding of the world around you and what it is that you advocate for, what it is you support and, and champion at the very least. And um, it's going to stem from how we kind of live as individuals, obviously, but it when we get more further into property theory, like, all right, so how much can we say is actually ours and stuff like that? That's, that's a different question for different many different theories and I stuff. I guess to so. the extent and how property is used or applied, yes. Yeah. But I guess like yeah. the definition but the de of what is property, right. um, would you say it's tangible, right? Something real, something you can hold, right? Touch? Yeah. You know, um, and, yeah. So it... it about we, scarcity, yeah. right? If, yeah. If, if the, there was, in, right. If yeah. it was infinite, we'd have no problems, right? We have no conflicts of dispute, right? Right. You know, and that's the thing is that um, unlike uh, maybe like some other people... Um, I mean, you might be able to have a commons in certain things, and that's that's definitely true. But there is are there are things that are, are going to remain scarce. So of course you would need a way to kind of, and that's why you know markets would work in that yeah. sense. Yeah, right, and so. you can have rivalries because there there may be competing claims <coughs> of titleship mm -hmm. ownership over that property, right? Yeah. Um, so how to resolve those conflicts of dispute in your community, right? How do you resolve conflicts of dispute over uh, competing claims of property? How do you defer that this bottle belongs to him or her? Or this uh, land belongs to him or her. If uh, well, that you know, and that's 
Yeah, I don't know. It, like it all, all depends on what, you know, what the situation like. Not not just the situation, but like what the, what the property norms of that, so, that community is. I mean, I know you're talking specifically about my community, but, you know, I can't speak for all left libertarians about what my views on property are because other. Of course, now you yeah. can only speak for yourself, right? Right. 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 So it's. Um, you know, and I'm still sort of developing these thoughts myself, okay, so okay. I, yeah. you know, oh, that, that's, forgive that's, me that's, if that's, I'm not no, like no, an that's, expert. That's a good, that. honest answer. Yeah. That, that's good. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. like, what do you think about, like, the ethical so. way to uh, to defer who owns what would be, like, homesteading, right? right. Nobody owns well, it, right? You know, and, and one of the one of the big things is, is we're going to, you're just, you're, there's going to be that conversation about, like, sorry, so how, what what is being used, right? And how are we going to make sure that, that what's being used by that one person is is his or hers or whatever and how do we make sure that no one else takes that and I know and I realize that that's like pretty much the same but we agree that it's wrong to initiate for us right Right. Uh, in terms of that right so So, homesteading voluntary exchange great ways to resolve kind of these conflicts yeah yeah, and there's and there might be different ways of approaching property for sure but you know we do think that like hey if you know if someone does own something right it's theirs and if you do t- try to take that from them. Yeah, it's not yeah right. without their consent. Right. Yeah, we, yeah, we recognize so. it as theft, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and in those areas, okay, like that's that's uh, yeah. That's, and you know, sorry if I like kind of all over. The oh place no no and no stuff. no, you're good you're yeah. good. <laughs> uh, for me, it's like a, I'm uh, I, I, for me, I, I grew up reading about all this sort of yeah. stuff. My my first introduction to anarchy came from the Brian McKenzie info mm-hmm. shop here in Washington D.C. Yeah. So I've I've read uh, all these letters. So I've read all a lot right. of this stuff. So I guess for me, I guess familiarizing myself and understanding where this stuff comes from. Sometimes I just find Areas are not particularly clear or clearly mm-hmm. defined, right? Oh yeah, and, and so, I yeah, and it's like I know I'm tabling and stuff, and I'm able to give clear definitions to people. It's like, cam add the camera. It's like oh my god. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the reason why I'm like a little bit nervous now. Right, right, right. right. No, like, no, no, no. All right. So so we would say I, again. Yeah. Government's abolished. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you consider yourself? Uh, I consider myself a mutualist. Actually. A mutualist. Okay. Yeah, so. Uh, and what what is a mutualist? Uh, so, can you define that for us? <laughs> this is a uh, so. The funny thing is, is that uh, well, while the mutualism group has been starting to formulate as a broad thing, we haven't had a huge like. I guess I think the best way to put it is like you could ask twelve different mutualists on the definition of mutualist; they'll probably tell you twelve different things. Um, right now, we're still trying to um, kind of re uh, rebound in a sense. Uh, mutualism sort of started with uh, Perdon, but Pierre Joseph Perdon. Um, it was the original anarchy, really, um, and a lot of a lot of the ideas of mutualism was kind of lost in a sense because no one really translated Proudhon or they used Proudhon's works to um, promote either like uh, more of like a communistic anarchism or an individualist anarchism. So everyone kind of took Proudhon's work as what it, what they wanted, and they didn't really pay attention to his words. Um, mutualism. Uh, this is gonna. Be, I'm still like learning how to talk more better about this yeah. uh, just because it is something that's totally new and I was in a conversation with someone on Facebook about how you know, I'm very nervous when talking about mutualism because it's um, it's definitely something newer it's a newer idea stop right there you just told me earlier that Perdon put this word together put the whole concept and idea you called it the original anarchy for God's sake he said <laughs> In terms of mutualism, you provide a historical narrative. It's kind of like what you do with most of your definitions, right? Or lack thereof, right? I'm not asking for an example. I'm not asking what other people saw it as or what is perceived to be or what people feel about it. I'm asking, how do you define mutualism, man? You call yourself a mutualist. You should have a clear idea of what that means of the label that you ascribe to yourself, right? At the very least. And then we're going to tell me that this is something old and to try to establish some kind of a credibility towards it. And then... And then tell me that no, no, no. That's actually this is this is something new. I don't really know what what, what it is. You know, we're still trying to figure it out. It's uh, it, it's new. It's like pick one or the other. Is something old that's it's been around for quite some time since Proudhon, as you mentioned, or is this doing what? You know, pulling bullshit out of your ass, making shit up, right? Pick one or the other. You've been out here tabling for quite some time, telling people about mutualism. You should have a clear indication by then, at this time, at this moment, for quite some time that you've been doing this, that you know what is mutualism. How do you define it? Right? 
I mean, don't ask me. Don't ask me to do your work. Right? I, I could probably define it better than you. But please, let's let's figure this out. Pick one or the other. Right? For me, it just tells me your inability to provide definitions is telling me you're lying to me, or you're lying to yourself, or you're just making these things this this up all together. Right? For whatever agenda. Again, let's find out. But um, I think the best, the the two best uh, ways we can. Uh, today that we can kind of go about defining mutualism is either taking it through the um, individualist anarchist lens like uh, Kevin Carson so he uh, associates mutualism with more of um, uh, like a low capital low overhead kind of market system so um, there there are things that you know people may agree or disagree uh, with with Kevin Carson so he kind of holds a subjective labor theory of value subjective subjective labor theory yeah so I it's, think of that yeah it's kind so, of been kind of debunked right values uh, I mean I'm sorry well, subjective theory. I thought you were mentioning like uh, it's yeah labor so theory. like All right, different well one, it's yeah. it's a different way of approaching labor theory. Uh, yeah subjective theory of value yeah yeah, yeah, value yeah. subjective absolutely That's and and yeah. he, he he takes this subjective la la uh, value theory and approaches it with a labor theory of yeah value. so labor he theory kinda, of value. He, he, I thought I heard him correctly the first time. I was very confused there for a second because labor theory of value and subjective theory of value are two different things, right? One was uh, advocated by uh, Adam Smith, right, a long time ago, and thinking, well, we're trying to understand the value and, and where its price is kind of derived from, and perhaps it's included in the, the amount of labor that is uh, toil through to create that product. When in, in reality, consumers don't give a shit. <laughs> if you spend 10 hours or 100 hours, as long as it works, it works for many of them, right? Um, their preferences and ascribing the value or utility of such a product or service is going to be different from one person to the next. You know, that's why it's subjective, right? There's no definite way in which you can derive and come to uh, an exact price. And so combining the two, it's uh, when I first heard that, I was, <laughs> I was like, maybe I misheard him. Maybe, I don't know, I'll give him the benefit of a doubt and try to separate the two. But no, he, he did say that. He did say that there is a mutualist out there that does subscribe to the labor's subjective theory of value. What the hell is that? Um, he combines the two. Now, you can take the arguments for what it is, and you can, you can argue with it. That's fine. Um, it's just one way of going about uh, mutualism. And then uh, you have uh, Sean Wilbur, who um, who's... Uh, Really big uh, anarchist historian. Uh, I would say philosopher, but I, he, I don't think he calls himself a philosopher. Um, who has really dug through a lot of the old anarchist works of Proudhon, uh, some of the uh, Spanish anarchists of like the late 19th century, and then uh, anarchist historians like Max Netlau, who um, kind of take mutualism as... Um, See, I'm going to mess up this definition. He's going to get so mad. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, um, I'm just asking about how yeah, you find mutualism. And so mutualism, in that sense, is more of like um, an anarchy that doesn't accept any adjectives. It's, um, it's going to be a way of um, the, whatever kind of antagonistic elements in society that exist, it's a way of kind of making, um, kind of making them kind of work together, in a sense. Um, and see, I'm, I'm probably terrible with that definition, no, too. Yeah. <laughs> and it, um, but what's really neat about uh, Sean Wilber's way of defining mutualism is that it, it, is, it is an anarchist without adjectives definition. of. Um, however, uh, like I said earlier, it's an anarchy that accepts no adjectives. Um, in, a, in a sense, it's a, um, we approach anarchy as not a system. So, like, we, you don't achieve anarchy through, like, a free market, or you don't achieve anarchy through communism, or whatever you know, whatever people kind of, uh, you know, use a system to kind of attach anarchy to. Anarchy is its is its own special kind of thing. Um, you have to embrace it in all of its senses, and you have to take it up for for what it is. Take it as it is. At this point, I'm taking it as it is that you do not know what it is you're talking about here, kid. It sounds to me otherwise that your model mutual society is a world without definitions. Um, there are How do you define anarchy? Again, anarchy is, um, you know, it is no state, but it's also much more than just no state. It's a way of um, kind of not having, like, power being associated in society. It's a very anti-governmentalism. So um, is it strictly 
in terms of power, you're saying like uh, people who like political rulers. Yeah, right? political rulers and stuff like that. And we we would like to also see uh, a lessening of hierarchy as well. We would Why like to hierarchy. See... What is define hierarchy? So hierarchy is a sense of, and, and I know that some people take defini different definitions of this. Hierarchy is kind of like that um, one over the other kind of thing. It's a vertical kind of uh, situation where one person has more power over other people. And this and this can be created um, not only through like like business firms, but can also be created by uh, by ways we interact with each other throughout How society. How power? What, what is that? So mean? that's like, so power, we're, we're talking about like things like oppression and things like that. Not just state oppression, we're talking about like social oppressions too, like racism and sexism and homophobia and stuff like that. So hierarchy is racism and homophobia. So hierarchy tends to be developed through racism, sexism, and homophobia. So, like, so, you know, if most of society kind of takes a, a racist view against one, one person or a group of other people, you create a lower and upper kind of class. You know, you have that, the people who are accepted throughout society, and you have people who are not accepted. Um, that, it, like, it might be... So you're saying hierarchy is uh, racism. If there's no I racism, then <clears throat> there's no hierarchy. We're, what we're saying is is that if you're looking at how sexism, how hierarchy gets developed, it is through things like racism and sexism. So even, you know, some people have different way, ways of approaching hierarchy, and that's totally fine. But, you know, we think that if we are going to be a free society, we should try our best not to develop those hierarchies because it does kind of take away indiv yeah, individual... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm against individual. racial hatred and uh, yeah, sexual, sure. sex, gender hatred. I guess you could mm -hmm. say the definition of what is uh, sexism, right? Of course. Uh, so you're saying hierarchy is just racial hatred and uh, gender well, hatred. Well, it's... I feel like, you know, that that's a very low definition of I, 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 Well, yeah, so that's like, I want a good definition. Yeah, no, and I, like, uh, I'm saying, uh, like, it, it's... Again, it's that... A power structure, but actually... It's a like, power what, struggle what, between what, higher and lower people. How, so, and higher... And and those saying, kind of things happen um, through those kind of oppressions like racism and sexism. It also can come up, uh, about through economic conditions. Uh, you know, it's... And what do you mean by power, though? Are you saying that... Uh, now, you know, power is that, um, that idea of just being able to kind of be in society... Um, and you, all right, I'm going to, let me take a minute really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say that power is that, um, is a way that one is able to kind of go about society and um, say that, hey, you can't, you can't be a part of this. Or I have all, of, I, I'm able to have all of this, you can't. Like what? So, um... You know, uh, so let's let's apply this to, to racism. So, you know, a white person says like, "Hey, you can't be a part of this group." To a black person or something like that, or um, like historically, or the, black they, colleges doing the same thing that white people can be part of those colleges, right? Now that, that that's a different issue, but let's uh, let's focus on what I'm uh, a little bit more. Are you saying that racism is only for white people, or are you saying that racism can only be for white people? I think that. Look, all right, racism only happens because there is a there is that power dynamic between white and, and, and black. Now, see, the reason why black people have in you know what? Actually, I probably shouldn't speak about this too much <laughs> no, because um, I feel like it might not be necessarily my place to to say how black people um, how they organize. But um, you know, the thing is, is that. When you're when you're uh, when you're put in, when you're made a marginal group for so long, of course they might be of course people might be skeptical of putting people who have marginalized you into their groups. How do they get marginalized? Well, they get marginalized through both uh, state and social constructs of of the, the state, right? Well, it's not just the state; it's a social construct. Well, because so, the, so, the state is a social construct, yeah, right? Right, but you what know, we also constructs? have, but we also have beliefs that 
like the state isn't the only thing that causes oppression. We ourselves also can be oppressors to other people by just how example? we go about. Of uh, a side of the state. So outside of, of like race, like I, I know I keep on going back to racism. Like, how, but how racism did, is something that. Can you give me an, an example in history outside of the state uh, in which those oppressors have been forced, right? Yeah. So all right. Um, let's let's look. All right. Let's look at how people treat Black Lives Matter movement. Um, a lot of people will refuse to acknowledge the Black Lives Matter simply because um, they they develop the are refusing to acknowledge that. People are refused. Wait, like, all right. So, like, maybe more or less conservatives, maybe even some libertarians. I did not ask which groups, right? I asked who, right? Specifically, which individuals are saying that the lives of black people do not matter? That's very important. The community at large wants to know that, right? If you're saying this is happening in such an abundance, this is all over the place, so pervasive, you should have at least a couple of names that you can draw up from, right? Employers employ you to, to divulge such information. They do not want to be associated with people who exhibit racial hatred, right? That's the farthest thing from their mind that they want to have any kind of connections to. This is a 21st century. People are getting fired for putting racist remarks. This is a CEO that got fired this past uh, October, this, this past year, for, for doing something like that on Facebook. When values are pushed forward, it's very difficult to, to reel them in and push them back, right? You know, several decades ago, the KKK numbered in hundreds of thousands. Today, there's less than a thousand left. There was... There is a, a reject out there in Colonial Heights, uh, waving his Confederate flag, donning his uh, KKK outfit. How many people were out there? Just him. Just him. Out there, just outing himself as, as the ignorant, stupid piece of shit that he is out there. Great. That is good information to know. We need to know <laughs> who these uh, racist uh, bastards are. All right? These are people then we can commit towards socially ostracizing. Right? You're not. Sorry. You're not, you know, civilization belongs to the civilized. You know, we're not invited to our store, invited to our restaurant, invited to our hotel, invited to my home. I do not have friends with those who have or exhibit racial hatred or gender hatred, right? These things are not as uh, prevalent as he makes it seem to be and seems to kind of draw it out of his ass to create this imaginary enemy out there. These conservatives who might have these opinions, these libertarians, but who? Who? Point them out, out them, if you know their name. Refuse to acknowledge that Black Lives Matter is like a important kind of movement to, you know, acknowledge black deaths by cops. And this is because, you know, they're saying, oh, you know, there are white people that get murdered by cops too. And Black Lives Matter isn't saying that, like, no one else gets murdered by cops. They're saying that most of the time when a black person gets murdered by the cops, no justice is received. And while it might be true that some white people might not receive some of the same justice. There are more or less times where it's like the black person has said, oh, that, that, that person deserved to get killed by the police. Whereas we tend to, people tend to rally more around the uh, white person and say, eh. But you just you didn't give me a social institute. You gave me a state doing that, right? The state has a monopoly but on infiltration. The, the, the but, state has a monopoly on the, on the police and the security. That's, that's right. not a social but institution that's, if you're trying right. to say the that's police, separate from that. Right. The police are part of the state. Right. However, it is individual people who give power to, to uh, who give like that confirmation to the police that say, oh, yeah, you're all right for, for doing that. You know, There's no he, factual evidence to show of a contractual relationship. I, no, see, I, I, would disagree, I would disagree with show that. I think that evidence. there are... How can I show you factual evidence? It doesn't right now? exist, and that's what I mean. It doesn't How exist. does it? Well, all right. So if I show, you, if I gave you a study to read, like multiple studies from universities that said, all right, so police, you know, brutalize black people. I'm sure they brutalize a lot of people. They, they, and they people. do. And but that there's a social construct that makes it worse off for black people. If I showed you all those studies right now... I mean, statistically, you can say white people are more to more than black people in terms of facts that are out there. All right, there. you know what? Uh, um, a simple Google search will, will show you the same facts and information that I found. And you can find that also some will show in proportion to uh, those groups, right, based on their pigment color and race. Um, but that's beside the point, right? When we were talking about Black Lives Matter, uh, who is really the perpetrator of killing a lot of black lives? It's not so much the police extortions, which is a constant threat for everyone, 
right? The very existence is a threat to, to peaceful people. But at the same time, when you add up the numbers, it's other black people killing other black people. Now, it's not a characteristic of any kind of group that a lot of uh, people out there would like to make a seem or denote, right? Uh, that is a very stupid thing when, to forget that this escalation of violence that you find between these kind of groups is as a result of the war on drugs, which comes from where? The state government. Without government, you abolish government, you, ab you get rid of the war on drugs, the war on people, which is why there's a lot of violence right now to begin with, right? Because if you make it criminal and illegal to trade certain goods, you're going to find it difficult to find arbitration, right? You can't really go up like, well, you know, your honor, uh, he sold me, sold me something that was not as advertised, right? Uh, he cheated me out. I was like, look, <laughs> this is criminal. This is illegal. All of you are going to jail. So not a lot of people have time for that, so to speak. So it's difficult then to find arbitration. And so violence is uh, sometimes for most people the only viable course of remedying the conflicts of dispute. So it's not so much uh, that is an inherent characteristic or anything like that. It's what happens when government interferes in voluntary interactions. It's it always happens that way. It's, it's always and it's uh, every single time government's trying to fix uh, a, a problem that they themselves cause band-aid solutions, they create more problems. That's the only thing the government can do. Create more problems and attempts to fix this previous problem. Every government attempt to fix itself, every legislation, every type of law is admission that the one before that did not work. And it's at your expense now. So if you really want to end a lot of this violence, you really want to end a lot of this homicide, let's end the organization that is uh, causing most of this to begin with, the common denominator of all our social problems and ills, government. But I would like to say though, Look, I agree that the state discriminates against all people, right? Not just black people, but also against uh, the Catholic back in the, in the past, against Latinos like myself and my family, against a lot of people yeah, out there, right? And it's look, not just and that's uh, not, specific I'm not group. saying that that's not wrong. I'm saying, though, that there I'm is... I'm saying all that is wrong. Right. And um, and I know what I'm saying is is that there is more to that. We, we as as white people, well, me, me, you're Latino, fine. Uh, I do have more privilege in society than other people do. They're and not accepting the cops, though, of doing that. That's not your privilege, right? What you do don't you want mean? the cops. You don't want the police state. You don't want. And that. you know what? Yeah. That might be true, but I'm still a part of. I'm still a part of white people. That's not a, your organization. You're not advocating for that, are you? I'm no. I don't advocate so for that. But I'm a, still associated with. How are it. you to blame for what racist status because do? I'm all right. You know what? This might. I think this interview is pretty much done. I'm sorry, but I think that there's too much arguments going on here that I can't. I like I. I want to give you definitions. I want to give you studies. I want to give you all the information I can. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you deserve it, right? We're trying to talk as individuals. I get it. I'm being interviewed. This is going on YouTube. I don't want to look like a fool. No, 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 wants to look no, like no, a no fool. yeah. It's just fine to say I'm, I'm not quite sure, right? I, and uh, I know it's, stuff, yeah. Right? And, like, there's, I've had no problems sometimes in areas. It's like, I don't know. Um, yeah. Maybe there's some good research out there that it's still going to look right. into. And, right. And that, in, you, you know, I think that there is a lot of research you can look into. You know, I can't give you specifics off the top of my head but you know the thing is is that it's it's out there the information is out there and you can look into it and the only reason why like i'm struggling with this whole thing is because it's like you want you want the exact definitions yeah. i want to give you the exact definitions yeah. thing is is that i'm not the greatest speaker in the world <laughs> and i you, you could tell that i Stumble over my words. Not at all. I'm you very, very, very well, very car you know, carried out and, and charismatic in the way you kind of present things. You're tabling, uh, providing this information. Yeah. Now you're telling people that free market is not the same thing as capitalism. You're telling people that capitalism is a negative connotation. I'm trying to understand why yeah, are you and saying and these I, things, right? If you yeah. have a reason to say that, I'd like to hear that, right? Yeah. Otherwise, if you're saying, well, I'm, there's, there's, there's no problem saying I don't know, instead of trying to push forward something negative, as you wouldn't want me to say something negative about your organization, right? Because right? I don't know, you know right? What? Like, yeah, no, you're, you're totally right on that. It's just, it's like, I just don't feel like I'm doing a good job. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if this would actually be really good. Would for, be interested in like, um, a near future, like doing like a recorded Skype conversation. I mean, that I would be fine with that. You okay, know, yeah. it's like, the thing is, is like, I want to be able to talk to you about these things. Right. I want to be able to give you the information that you want. And 
it's easy for me to get embarrassed just because it's like I trip over my words. I forget things off the top of my head. And uh, I there are words sometimes it's difficult for me to pronounce yeah, myself, right? You know. uh, but I'm saying like, I what I find the common denominator mm -hmm. that's hurting all people is government, right? No, this, and that's and that's totally uh, who, right, right. Who, who passed totally who passed a law to discriminate against people who cannot marry uh, people of different colors? Government, right? The marriage but, act was created you know, to prevent would, white people to marry a different people of color. That wasn't I, social structure. That was government. But the thing is, is that like the reason why you have these things happen is because people do support these government <laughs> these government laws happening. Like even if, if we got rid of the state today, I think that we would still have a lot of racism and sexism and things like that just simply because it's people who have these ideas. It's not just the state. Like, you know, um, we can, we can say that it's only through the state that there's oppression, but I think that would be the wrong way to look at oppression because power dynamics still exist with or without a state. You can, you can still have power dynamics in in anarchic systems, whether or not they're communist or free market. Or different and, color pigments as color, right? Like people in South Africa discriminating white farmers and uh, threatening their lives to take over their property, right? There's a lot of different races in the country. <coughs> well, Bolivians are racist towards a lot of other different Bolivians uh, where we're on from. Uh, there's a lot of different kind of discrimination. That you, know, and I, of that. you know, I would like to make a comment on it, but I don't have enough information to, to really do that, so I right. can't really... But, say, but, but these things, the way that their discrimination occurs is not their social construct, it's through, through government laws and now, the South see, that I, like specifies I said, different groups. But even, Jim Crow laws, for example, but, that was not a... Like, all right, but... That was government, right? Jim right, Crow laws? No, that was, that was government, but like, let's look... If we are saying that like, all right, government creates these, yes. these racist laws, yeah. how, like, why is it so different from places to place? It's not just because it's oh, like governments different... discriminate against people. Is right. What I'm saying. Yeah. But the problem is, is that like you're 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 saying like all right, so there are specific groups, there are specific outliers in, in these certain areas that are specifically targeted. How does that come about? It's because people also hold those beliefs. I don't know. I think it's a lot of violent sociopaths that rather have us fight against each other instead of looking at the <clears throat> root path of the distraction and that these people would I'm, rather fight us against each other instead of looking at the enemy that is the political I, rulers ourselves. But I think the problem is, is that you know, if if you limit just to just to the state, you're not going to get rid of any sort of any sort of uh, meaningful system. I mean, you can create a state just by having that kind of racism and sexism still exist. You know, I don't think that if we, you know, if we if we got rid of the state today, I do think that there a, a state would end up coming about just because there are still a lot of racists. There are, you know, and those racists tend to have even you know more resources than the than Rosa other Park. Was the, so the Rosa Park sit on the front of the bus because it was the bus company had a racist policy. She said on the... Uh, was it the bus company that had a racist policy? The social structure, like a, a, a business that had a racist policy themselves? Um, well, there was that law. and the it bus was a law. But yeah, there was a law. It was a government. But, it was all, but the bus driver also did not want that to happen. Yeah. I, I don't see why... I don't, like, I don't understand why like, you don't think it's possible that people themselves outside of the state... It's not that I don't think that it's possible... Um, towards building a free society. Yeah, there might be one, I mean, a couple people out there living in the woods out there and trying to figure out how to make their own way of life because no one's trading with people who exhibit racial hatred, uh, trying to struggle and survive. Sure, um, I'm sure a, a very few outliers of people will be out there adamantly and spewing all kinds of nonsense as well. Um, the point I'm trying to bring back is that this is a 21st century, right? Some of the points I mentioned earlier uh, in terms of being against racial hatred have, have been pushed forward as a value that many, many people are adopting, many businesses are adopting. Again, look at the number rate of the KKK members that numbered in the hundreds of thousands just decades ago. Today, less than a thousand left, right? Again, there was a guy in Colonial Heights, what was his name, Skip Rogers. His organization was the National Association for Awakening Confederate Patriots. How many people were out there? One. This one person. This one slob out there parading and talking about, I got freedom of speech. Right? Yeah, under government, because you do not have the freedom to disassociate and associate, you have to contend. You're forced to contend with assholes like him. But the thing is, government doesn't really solve racism. Remember, they can only put 
band-aid solutions to the problems that they created themselves. It's like the Marriage Act that they created, which was to prevent interracial marriage. That wasn't the market. That was government, right? That wasn't the market creating uh, Jim Crow laws. That was government because they didn't like the businesses that were actually trading with black people and producing profit, right? They, they don't care what the color of your skin is. They only care about the color of money, right? And let the businesses that do care go bankrupt, right? Boycott them. Uh, put increased pressure for economic suicide for any would-be person out there who's exhibiting racial hatred, right? That's that's how we win, right? Your, your products or service out there in the market, no one demands them. And if they do, show it to us. Please put your hand up, you know, come out of the closet and show yourself. I think that's the best thing we can do for anyone who exhibits racial hatred, for anyone who exhibits gender hatred, uh, or any kind of stuff of that kind of nature. Please come out of the closet, let yourself be known, so we know who not to patronize. We know who to create these boycotting uh, organizations against. Today is an interesting world we live in. You find uh, Starbucks advocating that you should be able to get married regardless of your gender. Right? Businesses are adopting values where decades ago they did not. That's got to tell you something. That's got to show you that <laughs> despite we live under a state-controlled market that is rife with so much control and restriction, what you can and can I do in terms of your interactions and relationships with others, there's still that small little segment sliver that we could call a market is still such a powerful force to restrain and put down and shut down people who exhibit racial hatred. That is an awesome world we live in that that can happen, right? And imagine when government is abolished and the market is finally be able to realize its full potential, right? And, and in terms of, and the way that the interactions of everyone can be known, the, the way that it can be shared, the way that we can see and, and, and go look towards the future finally, unrestricted, I can't imagine what it's going to be like, but I can tell you that the indication, the patterns of what we see in the past couple of years with businesses just shutting down and firing people left and right, if they're going to produce a, a comment that exhibits racial hatred on Facebook, gone. Sorry, you do not represent the values that our business is pushing forward. We can't have people like that. We can't have idiots on our team, right? Get the hell out of here. You know, go find another job and good luck, right? Um, that's new. That's, that is beautiful. I can't imagine what the market of tomorrow would look like when it's finally liberated. When we can finally round up and all these people who have, uh, whatever lingering racial hatred, you know, put together. Like there's this one guy up in northwestern parts of the states that's been trying to get all these people to move in to his land because he owns a lot of land. And of course he feels like he can take over the, uh, political council seats as a result and say, hey, if you're racist, come over here, we'll take it over. We'll take over the government here, this local small government. No one's moved there. He's been doing this for years. It's not as prevalent as a problem as people like this guy make it seem to be. Race or hatred, yeah, absolutely. It has nothing to do with the Libertor VS. I have no friends that advocate or exhibit that. I have no friends in the same manner for uh, people who hate uh, gender as well, gender hatred, right? Same thing. But to continue to go out there and make it seem like is we're rife with all these problems, uh, but not acknowledging the ways that, the, that we have been combating it, it alludes to something else. It alludes to something more sinister, something more to keep us fighting each other Instead of looking again at the common denominator that's always been in our faces, always creating this rife and problems for everyone, right? The war on people that it created. Again, that is government. And for him to not continue to go against that, right? To say, yes, fuck government, fuck the violence. Remember, he was talking about earlier about minimum wage, not so much that it is forced through violence, that is enforced through violating consent. His problem was that. The, the racial connections, which alludes to something even more sinister that we should know by now. C4SS is a front for cultural Marxism. It has nothing to do with the free market. It has nothing to do with freedom or liberty or equality. It has something just to 
puts you at odds at one another to give their life some kind of meaning and some kind of a way to always feel oppressed, always feel victimized and find no way out of there. Right, because he mentioned, uh, you know, if you abolish the state, it'll still be rife. It'll still be all over the place. Oh man, you'll you'll never see the end of it. This is not a good organization. It's not one that I could ever ally with. Right? I mean, your application, you want to abolish racism, then you should be honest in pointing out in the way how the market has uh, been treating those kinds of remarks. But you choose to ignore it. Right? You're not exactly for free markets then. Right? If you choose to ignore the way that society has been <laughs> hammering down at every opportunity that someone makes a stupid remark out there. Firing them. Remember there's a, what was his name? The CEO, marketing executive, Gerard Roth. Big guy, big time, makes a lot of money. Gone. Gone. And nobody got time for that, right? But the way he wants to frame this entire narrative is that there will always be racism that it's white people who can only be racist. Not all white people, but just white people, right? It creates this eternal struggle. It's another evolution in the way how Marx himself was trying to say this. You got the proletariat and you have the bourgeois. 21st century, you have the oppressed and you have the oppressors. You have the people who are racist and the people who are the minorities. They only seek to keep you down they only seek to make you feel victimized for the rest of your life and not finding any solutions outside of that is to make it perpetual for a lifetime with no solution, no escape. That's your life. Victimized. That's not an organization that I would want to ally or go through or trying to find freedom through because there is no freedom through that. There's always this eternal enslavement to being oppressed. They make it seem as innate in society, that this is rampant. So yeah, you'll never achieve freedom through that. So what is this guy pushing? Maybe he doesn't even know. I'll give him that benefit of a doubt. Um, people get swooped up all the time with this sort of nonsense. It happens everywhere. It happens to a lot of groups. Um, they get hijacked by, by Marxism. They get hijacked by um, political advocacy, they get hijacked by yeah, a lot of political groups and especially communists. So what was that thing he, said, he mentioned earlier about mutualism and having an interesting diversion towards uh, Marxism? You know, it points it out that this mutualism thing is there's nothing, just another cover for communism light. I don't find it to be honest in their approach and especially the definitions that they use that they cannot even define, right? It seems to be that the definitions that they put out there, it's just defined by the time of season, time of day, how I'm feeling, what I ate this morning. Eh, it depends on your mood, your feelings. That's something definite. That's something that you can communicate to other people to understand the world around you. It only continues to mislead them, lie to them. And that's something I can't tolerate. And that's something I can't stand by. And that's something that's another reason why I'm here at this conference. To show you that out there you will find liars and cowards. And if you have this integrity, Dylan, to, to see it for what it's worth, remove yourself from everyone else out there or otherwise telling you, oh man, there's racism abounds. When you know that's not to be true, right? Don't feel peer pressured as the way it seems to be because of your color of your pigment, right? It seems to be you think that you yourself must be then racist. Is that what you view yourself? Do you think you're racist because you're white? Don't listen to all that bullshit. That's how they control you. That's how they shame you, guilt you. That's how you cannibalize each other. You don't need any of that. You're not responsible for the government and the police extortionists that do discriminate, that do have and exhibit those racial hatreds towards all groups, towards all people, towards all genders. You're not responsible for that. Don't collectivize yourself and share that history. You're not responsible for their actions. You're not party to the same crime. Be honest with yourself. Have the courage to remove yourself from that. For most people, their, their interests, especially before Jim Crow laws, is like they don't, the only thing they care about is the color of their money. They, they I want to produce see, I don't, if you want to restrict yourself, you're not going to get a lot of businesses. I don't think that's... Even, you know... 
Facts. I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's facts, and, and history has shown I, that. For example, I think that history has shown the opposite. So, like, but you can, can't point anything else without showing me that government is the cause behind these things. But what I'm saying, though, though, is that people, being you know, who elect those people that make those racist laws. People hold those beliefs themselves. Black people vote too, right? Latinos vote too. So you're saying that they're also voting to have these racist laws enacted against them? Well, that you know, we're, we're, what I'm saying is that like there's this is a major, majoritarian kind of democracy, and it's, I know it's a republic, whatever it, whatever way, it's it's a vote that, you know, most people would say that oh hey, you know the, you know there's a lot more white people than there are black people or Latino people, there of course it's easier to make. Yeah. That's just my friend Phil giving the courtesy signal that we're almost out of battery. All right, so, so I guess we'll, all right, yeah, look, yeah, we'll have to have this conversation another time. I, I realize that like you definitely have different ideas than I do on, on certain things, but and I'm you know like I said I'm sorry if I tripped over my words. No 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 no. Definition. I mean it's uh I, I, it comes to a maybe perhaps uh areas in which we should kind of further examine. Right. Yeah. Further, kind of look into it and uh, further see what other facts and evidence to kind of back uh, mm -hmm. these arguments. Right. Um, and I'd be more than happy to have like a further conversation yep. about this and uh, kind of <clears throat> throw information back and forth and kind of further yeah. see how that checks out. All right. Yeah. And you know, it's it's easier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, we can do Skype and stuff. It's easier to talk through email sometimes too because I'm able to kind of think about what I'm writing and. Uh, but I guess time efficiency. Let's just yeah. have a discussion next time. Yeah. That All right, that's fine. All right, cool. Pleasure well, to meet pleasure you, man. Thank you for com too. coming out, man. This yeah. is a lot of fun. Yeah, no problem. So that concludes the interview with Dylan Delector from C4SS, the Decentralized Center for a Stateless Society. A mutualist, I can't even define what is mutualism. But it's not just them. It's a lot of groups out there. It's a lot of people out there. Remember, everyone out there, until proven otherwise, is a liar or a coward. Right? That's what we're going to figure out this world. Never be afraid to ask why or continue and especially to ask why. It doesn't stop at because I said so or because I'm your father or your mother, I'm this title, I have, I'm wear this color cloth. It doesn't stop. Right? People who say so other are trying to stop you and your tracks from continuing further in discovering that they're just full of bullshit. This is something that children should learn as well, right? You want to encourage them to figure out the world and the best way that they can defend themselves is to always ask why and never to be in a position to always submit to that kind of authority, false authority, right? Of titles that lack merit, that are not earned, right? But yeah, it's not just C4S, there's a lot of groups out there. Um, a lot of people are trying to create this, you know, divide among uh, tax slaves, among the prisoners here, right? Great way to control the tax farm, just keep them attacking one another. That's how cultural hegemony works, right? That's, uh, you look up the history of uh, racism, where did it come from? Trotsky, right? Communism. Um, in terms of saying there's, a, you know, racial superiority and, and all these different areas, and it, it has a Marxist background history from it. That's what cultural Marxism is about. Right, and these different ways to kind of break up groups and get them to attack one another um, for the rest of our lives. That's what C4SS will be advocating for and many other groups out there. Uh, many of these friends that there will always be the oppressors and the oppressed and you will always be victimized and there's no way out of it. Even if the state is abolished, you'll still be a slave. There's no solution. There's no way to end it all. And why, why would they have an interest to it? the same thing? Why would government have an interest in and uh, actually solving the solution of poverty, they'd be out of a job, right? Yeah, their mission's over. There's no use for them. They become dependent on this, uh, on the divide of people to get them to attack one another. I know some people say, well, you know, look at Trump. Look at look at these other politicians out there creating the same thing. And look, look, look what's happening with Muslim. Well, who 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 are the targeted group before that? Hispanics, Latinos. Remember that? Did you forget about that already? They're taking our jobs. And before that. Chinese workers, black people, um, Irish coming in. <laughs> government is always going to have the scapegoat. Who did Hitler have? Jews, right? Government is always going to have other groups of people to distract you and to center um, your hatred, right? Your distress, your, uh, the embroiderment of the satisfaction you have in life that they themselves created, that governments created. But to create an outlet and to, you know, unleash it onto other groups of people that have nothing to do with it. 
Remember, it's the violent sociopaths on top who are controlling all these, all these functions and all these organizational departments that put a hand in that, that have their vested interests, right? It's easier to control people instead of having a gun pointed at every single person to make sure that you're keeping in line and in check, right? It's a lot cheaper to have each other doing the same thing. And it doesn't help with C4SS proliferating this kind of nonsense. At least from this interview, you, you understand, you see its true colors. It has nothing to do with freedom again. It has nothing to do with liberty. It has nothing to do with achieving real freedom in our lifetime. It's to keep you in a perpetual state of victimhood. That's it. To continue to view that only white people can be racist, and harbor this hatred towards that, attack one another. Maybe some of the people in that group know it or not, but it's something that you need to have to start questioning, challenging. Right? Many of these groups out there, this as well. It happens in universities. It happens as where these safe spaces and all this check your privilege nonsense is coming from. That's where Marxism spreads. And if you want to help achieve real freedom in your lifetime, you're going to have to put a stop to that, right? Wherever it comes from, right? Not just plug it up, but hammer it away. Knock it out for the nonsense that it is. It's the only way to end it especially university levels, especially whatever groups that advocate and contend and push forward for these lies. It's not true. Check the facts for yourself. And with that, I have a, uh, what do you call it? A Patreon account now. If you guys uh, enjoy this video, if you guys enjoy what I do and the work that I put into a lot of the videos and out there in the streets and spreading anarchy news from underground, um, yeah, please check out the patron and uh, I appreciate your sponsorship. I appreciate your patronage and doing what I do best, doing what I do better than anyone else out there and spreading anarchy. So with that, if you guys ever want to rich, uh, visit Richmond and check out what we have going on here with Liberty RVA, send me a message. Uh, more than welcome to stay with me and uh, yeah, show you around. Uh, and maybe we'll find some Maoist communist scumbags to uh, put down as well. And with that, this is Kyle Molinet, and I'll see you guys at the Victor Party. Take good care.